Hi, welcome everybody. This is our live Facebook session about move-in and we're going to answer your questions today about the move-in and the move-in process. So here at the U of A, we have about well, approximately 6,000 students who live on campus uh, counting our Greek houses. And so, that's a lot of students. That's a lot of students and they're all going to arrive in a very short time span. Uh, Thursday and Friday next week are sporty and band recruitment move-ins. And then on Saturday will be our unassisted move-in, and then on Monday will be our assisted move-in. And so we're going to walk you through that process as we go through. I'll show you this clothing I've got on and why we're yeah. going to wear it. Do you mind, uh, Billy, taking me through your hat and your vest? Great, sure. Well, as you get to the parking lot, you will see volunteers and parking lot coordinators who will be wearing an orange vest like this. That's the orange uh, vest, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. This is it. So they'll kind of help direct you to get to a parking spot, and we're going to show you a demonstration of what that looks like in just a second. Also, our volunteers, particularly for those of you who are moving in Monday for the assisted move-in, will have hats like this, so they'll help you identify them. Um, and many of them will be wearing their group shirt, whether they're helping for a fraternity or a local church organization or whatever the organization is. We invite is, the community we, in uh, to help, so that's a so, big part hey, of it. Hey, if you're in the community, uh, uh, you can contact our Volunteer Action Center on campus, and we would love to have your help in welcoming our Razorbacks to campus as they come in in a few weeks. So. What we wanted to do today was kind of walk you through a little bit of our move-in process, uh, how we do it, what, what it looks like, and how to help you do it. Uh, the first thing we want to remind you, though, before we get started is if you go to our website, movein.uark.edu, there's lots of wonderful information there. We know a lot of people aren't familiar with the area. We will have move-in maps up Monday morning so you can see how, for your specific call, what is the best route. There's lots of construction on campus as the university continues to grow, so we want you to look at those move-in maps, follow them, and we'll get you around the construction and the most efficient way to get to your residence hall. And those will be available uh, Monday morning. We'll yeah. have them up on the site. Right now, you know, we're kind of in the prepare to arrive phase of our website, but we're about to get into the arrive time phase. Right. One of the biggest things, if you have not done this already, please go pick a move in um, arrival time. It's critical for our process that you're able to pick those arrival times and make those through. If you have any questions or you're trying to go through that process, please make sure that you are, that you've done that, that you picked your arrival time. You can refer to your contract status page. If you forgot what time you signed up for arrival time, it's on your contract status page in your contracting process through your housing portal when you signed your contract and did those steps. So if you have any questions, feel free uh, to go refer to that for your, move, for your arrival time. Let's talk about arrival time. We emphasize the term arrival time instead of move-in time. The reason we do that is we want you to know that there are a couple steps that you need to do um, as you show up and kind of as you arrive uh, on campus. One of the first things you do, you'll actually pull up, park in the lot, and we're going to show you that in a second. You'll get your keys and check in. But if you haven't already, make sure you log into your contracting portal and do your contract status uh, into your contract status page and make sure that you've done the safety addendum and the confidential contact. There are two of the steps you have to do during the move-in process. Do it before, make it easy on ah, yourself before you ever Do it on the front on end, then you don't have to so, do it the day of. That's um, smart. And as of a couple days ago, almost half of the students who are moving in for next year have already done that. So the props to those of you who've done that uh, already. But let's go ahead and do that and get that out of the way. And that's two less steps you have to do as we go um, into the move-in process. Now, Billy, we did have a question that's already come in. And it's the question, uh, when do we find out about special requests? Okay, special arrival requests, uh, continue to check your UARC email. We've got quite a few of those in our assignment staff and our administrative services staff. Um, associate director are processing those and putting those out. So uh, check your email. Feel free to email us if you just need a status follow-up. But they're trying to turn those over within a five-day process, as it says on the form, as quickly as they can and deal with the volume as well. Right. So just an apology about the sound. We have a truck going through the parking lot right now. <laughs> but um, live, yeah. live TV, you it never is know what you're going to get. So. Very true. But you're saying, so uh, check your email. Continue to check your email. And um, five days is about the turnaround? Five days is a turnaround for the special arrival request. We try to take as many special arrival requests as we can and also understand there are factors with those that parking is very limited. So it's very difficult. So we want to try to get people into the, the process. We can handle all 6,000 students who go through the move-in process. So sure. if at all possible, please make sure you sign up for arrival time within the, the fields that are available. So, uh, Sarah asks, uh, where do we go if we got approved for the special arrival? 
check your UARC email. We'll That'll send, give you the information? Yep, we'll send okay. all correspondence to your UARC email. Um, even if we're not available to exactly meet your standard, uh, your request, we'll send that to you as well. Fantastic. So we're in Reed parking lot right now, right? We are. We're in the Reed Maple Hill parking lot, and uh, we kind of uh, picked this particular lot. And one of the reasons we did is it's actually a lot that is, as you can see, there's not a lot of parking spaces out here. But there are over about 1,500 students who will use this parking lot for move-in. So the process is very detailed. That's why it's important for you to come at your arrival time. And it will show you the process, how to get you through here. So, Christopher, we're ready. I we're think ready. We'll, we'll start, we're ready to we'll bring our, to um, our actor uh, driver so, and student in. Okay. So we have two of our staff members, uh, Kent, um, and they're going to come in right now, and we're going to show you how the move-in process works. So sure. if you can see the red car off in the distance, and please ignore the truck that has decided yes. to go through our parking lot right now. Now, he would have stopped the be at the front to get a parking pass, is that right? We would have actually directed him into the lot, okay. and there would have been a volunteer who would have directed him into a, a parking spot. Uh -huh. So I'm going to pull in. I'm going to get Kent um, and our student to kind of pull in okay. into a parking space right here. Uh, again, the people with the vest will help you pull into your parking space. Now, sure. the, what we're going to demonstrate here is the unassisted process that will happen Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So if you're moving in one of these three days, you'll get it. So after someone directs you to your spot, you're going to come in and someone will come up to your car and greet you. So, Hello. Ken, how you doing? Pretty good. And so... Welcome to the University of Arkansas. Welcome to the U of A. Woo! We, Thanks, Dewey. One thing that we plan for is we assume that a lot of people are going to come with two cars. So. Mm -hmm. For our example here, we put our parent and our student in the same car, but don't worry about that. We're planned and we're prepared for, for two, two cars. cars. Okay. Um, so the only thing that we ask that you do not bring a U-Haul trailer, as you can see, the lot's small. It's really difficult to get trailers in here, and so we don't allow them for move-in. So please be cautious and aware of that. But what will happen... Billy, let me pause for just a second. We got a question, sure. and I want to go ahead and answer it. Uh, Michaela asks, where do we go if we're moving in for Rock Camp on Tuesday? Is that something we need to answer later? Yeah, we'll follow up with uh, Michaela because okay. the rock camp process is a little bit different uh, for this, but the parking lots will still uh, will still be open at that point. They okay. have not been closed like they will be and then available gotcha. for only specific. Michaela and Jean, who are asking about rock camp, we will get that answer for you and post it here. So, great, great question. Thank, Thank you, you for sending that in. But you will get it. We'll put a, a da on your dashboard here. We'll put a move-in parking form. Most parking lots are about a 30 minute time. So from the time you pull in your lot, you have 30 minutes in that. We do ask that you're very you know, cautious about that. Use the 30 minutes. So we have a lot of other students and we want to maximize the ability to get you as close to the building sure. as possible. So uh, if you can be courteous to others and make sure the 30 minutes are, are followed. So you, Last year was my first year doing it. I would describe sure. it as a fast but controlled pace it is we are we get a lot of we ask for a lot of feedback about the move-in process and we typically find that parents and students don't feel rushed because we do get them very close mm -hmm. to the building and we want to make it as easy as possible for you on move-in day so um, you'll get the car and so what will happen in this situation here is our student um, and our parent will is there a student in there Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hey, student. So this is Blake, who's actually a staff member, but was a former student at the U of A, so she's going to help us out. There so you go. in this case, Blake would actually get out of the car. The parent will start unloading at this point, mm -hmm. and then Blake would get out of our car. Um, at different points, depending on the building you're in, and we're at Reed at the Maple area right now, there will be white tents that you will see um, across campus, and whoever's helping you with your parking pass will direct you to your tent. So don't worry about trying to find that. Okay. You'll go straight to your tent. So what will Blake will do after she's parked her car and the parent has parked her car? At this point, the parent will start unloading. Um, Blake will go over to the tent, take her ID with her. So very important. Please make okay, sure yeah. you bring Let's your ID. Say that ID. again. So what do we? What does she need to do? She needs to bring her ID with her. Uh huh. Um, and she'll go over to the tent. Okay. Which, the non-existent tent, but it would be right here. For Reed Hall, this is actually where your tent okay. would be um, okay. on a move-in day. So Blake would go there, take her student ID, drop it off, and they will give you the keys to your room. Um, at that point, Blake would come back to her car, and she would help Dad in this case. Uh, Dad's ahead, already unloading. Go ahead so, and unloading. So, there we go. Great, great. Okay. So with that, that's kind of what it looks like when you actually get here. Mm -hmm. So about 30 minutes have gone by in our pretend situation here. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we'll pretend that Blake and her father have gotten everything up to the room and they are ready to go. So what happens next? Well, what do I do with my car if I only got 30 minutes with it? That's a great question that um, we'll get to. And then Blake's going to go grab her bag yeah. and we're going to talk about some things that we want you to bring to move in and some things we don't want you to bring Sounds to move good. In. Nita had a question. She asks, should I bring my own dolly? Should you bring your own dolly? Yes. Absolutely, yes. yes. We do have a few that you can check out. Um, but there are a limited amount for the number of students we have. So if you have a dolly or something that makes it easy for wheel, wheeling your stuff up, absolutely, that's a great question. We have some, but don't count on it, basically. Yes. Okay. And the configuration you're in right now, of course, this is this is the unassisted Saturday parking configuration. Is that right? This is our unassisted Saturday parking configuration. Um, and this actually, if you're checking in on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, is the way we'll do it. This is pretty much a universal configuration no matter which lot you're mm -hmm. in. Um, we're going to have the dad jump in the car here and we're going to show you, for those of you who are moving in on Monday, what that process kind of looks like as far where as getting park. your car where to go. This um, would be so, the, the way you would park on Monday during assisted, right? So Monday during assisted. So Kent, our dad's going to back our back our car up and we're going to show you what a little bit of okay. assisted on Monday um, would look like for. So you'll come into the parking lot exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. There'll be someone here to direct you to a parking space. Um, the only thing that you're really going to find different, uh oh, oh. almost tripped <laughs> I got a box there, there yeah. Uh, is you'll pull into a parking spot vertically. So as you can see how Ken is like that, uh -huh. uh, there'll be people to direct you, so don't worry People wearing the vest? Will people wear the vest? Will people wear the vest? You'll pull into a spot vertically on Monday and you'll begin unloading your items. Volunteers will be here to help you, um, but we do want to emphasize help. It's still your move-in process, you'll do it. If okay. you're the student on Monday, same thing. You'll pull up, you'll park, the, the parent will start unloading, and you'll go to the tent and get your keys. Um, now the difference is on Monday after your things are unloaded um, into a spot is you will then get back into your vehicle and then go ahead um, and move it to a different location. Um, and what's uh, probably a good thing to know that we'll talk, a yeah, about, talk about that process. Here where does your car go after that 30 sure. minutes is over with? Uh, um, question comes in from Caitlin. Does the 30 minute move in allotment apply only to the parking lot and getting keys or the entire move in process? It is just for the parking lot and getting keys. Um, once your items are up in your room, you have the entire rest of the day to really kind of get settled, um, complete your room condition form, and we're going to talk about that in mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but yeah, to get settled, it's really just getting the items from the physical parking lot up to your room. You don't have to unload um, in the 30 yeah. minutes. So. And speaking of which, we were saying well, items you can bring and items you shouldn't bring. Yeah, so that's a great question. I wonder if, do you have some items that you have brought? So Blake, I do student. have items that I have brought. Some props? So here in my got? bag, I have brought my pet. His oh. name is Barry. Uh-huh. So he came to see me off here at move-in. But so. he can't come. If yeah. this were an actual real animal, cannot come with you, of course. Yes, Would no have pets to go. on move-in day. Oh, okay. So. There we go. I Tossed pet, in. Obviously, our pets can't come inside of our residence halls, um, and we don't allow them, and we don't want our pets to stay in our cars where it's very hot and, sure. and uncomfortable and risk that. So please, as much as you love your animals, please leave them at home on move-in day because they're not allowed inside of the buildings, and we don't want them to stay in a car. That's uncomfortable for them and for, for you. What else is in your bag, Blake? I also have in my bag my handy-dandy water bottle. Oh, it's going to be hot. It's important to stay hydrated on move-in day, so that's definitely something everyone should bring with them. But water bottle. We also have water fountains inside. Excellent. Now, do you drink water or do you like Gatorade? What do you? What's your? What's your? I personally like water with a little bit of lemon in a it. A little bit of lemon. Nice. Gatorade's okay. just a little sugary for me, but sure. if that's your thing, go for it. Powerade is great too. Fantastic. Okay. Don't drink energy drinks though. No, don't drink no energy, energy drinks. drinks and no soda. Okay. That will uh, drain your electrolytes or something. Oh, yeah. Knock you out. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. What else is your bag, Blake? All right. I have also brought my closed toe tennis shoes. Oh, Ryan, right. what are you I wearing wore now? Let me see your kicks. Sandals. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, open-toed shoes are not ideal for move-in day. You're going to be doing a lot of walking. You're going to be doing a lot of carrying, you know, heavy items up and down stairs. You could trip and hurt yourself, or maybe hurt somebody else, or drop something and break it if you're wearing open-toed shoes while walking around. So it's important to bring closed-toed shoes. Closed-toed shoes with good grips on the bottoms, too. Yes. <laughs> I like that. We had a question come in. Um, well, Cammie was asking about the dollies, and we recommend that you bring dollies. 
-hmm. So we do have um, some available that you can check out, but their supplies obviously we don't have six thousand of them, mm -hmm, so we'll, we'll mm -hmm. not have one for every student. Uh, uh, Nita says on the OK Pet List, she saw harmless fish. That is correct. You can bring harmless fish. Tell me about the fish. harmless fish exception. Um, if you look in the uh, in the residence hall handbook, mm -hmm. which you can find online, it'll tell you the size of the aquarium and okay. those type things that you can have. But yeah, harm fish are, are more than welcome. Excellent. All right. Well, you've shown us kind of what we should and shouldn't bring. Yep. And then I've heard just um, that don't bring more than would fit in a parking space. Is that correct? That is correct. Your residence hall, your room here in the residence hall is going to be a very small room. You own half of that small room which is going to be roughly about the size of one of these parking spaces. If you can't fit it in a parking space, please do not bring it. It'll be too big and you'll end up having to carry it back home and no one wants to move things twice. Good rule of thumb. Thank you. Yeah, good rule of thumb too is, uh, you know, you'll love your living space. It's wonderful. Um, but they're like everything, just like your room at home, there is a finite amount of room. So, um, you know, if you're within a four or five area hour radius of, of campus and you're going to go back home maybe for Labor Day or on a weekend, hey, it's still hot. Bring your warm summer clothes now. And then later in the semester when you go home, you can bring those heavy winter coats and those kind of things, kind of swap that out. So that's making a, a kind of an efficient use of your space. Absolutely. So we were talking about the process and Blake, our student, had checked in, gotten her key, and then come back out, unpacked, taken it upstairs. 30 minutes have passed. What do we do next? 30 minutes have passed. So Blake comes back down, and uh, hopefully and the father would be with them or whoever you bring with you on move-in day. Um, you'll, go back to, uh, you'll go back to your car. So at this point, uh, parents and students will kind of go two separate ways. Um, if you are a student, you will park your car at lot 56, which is the south end of campus along MLK Drive. It's a very, very large parking lot will accommodate um, all students. If you are a parent, um, for the move-in day, you'll go to one of two locations. If you're moving in on kind of the north end of campus, uh, the Garland parking garage will have space available where you can park your car for the remainder of the day as you continue to move in. If you're on the south end of campus or the central part of campus, Humphreys, Yoakum, that area, or Pomfret to the south, you'll be able to use the Harmon Avenue parking garage as your, as your parking. There is no overnight parking for parents in those two garages, so please be aware of that. Uh, but during the course of the day, you're certainly welcome to, to do that. Again, refer to the website, movein.uark.edu. Um, so you may be thinking, well, how do I get from the parking space back to back to my residence? I was just thinking that. So we will have a shuttle service available. Um, you will have, we'll see some vans that will have university housing. Again, go to the movein.uark.edu. They'll say specifically, move-in courtesy shuttle. Yep. Move-in courtesy shuttles will be available. Uh, if you go to the website, movein.uark.edu, early next week we'll have the shuttle map route up there so you'll know exactly where to go to meet the shuttle. And they will just kind of run 15-minute loops and, and drop you off. If you are in lot 56 on Thursday and Friday and Monday for parking of those three days, uh, the university buses uh, system will be going. You can jump on the transit and parking bus. Uh, be a great way to introduce you to campus as you begin with anyway. Razorback so Transit, that, sure. Use Razorback Transit. It will bring you back up to the north end of campus or more to the central end by doing that. On Saturday, there's no transit and parking buses running. Um, however, the university housing will provide, again, a, a shuttle that will run students back um, to the central south and to the north end of campus. So, take care of you. Don't worry about getting back. Um, some people may choose to walk. It's really not that far of a walk um, for the parents in particular the parking garage. It's lot 56. You probably want to use the transportation shuttle buses provided. I know a lot of parents so. will arrive, they'll unload stuff, and then they'll want to go shopping in the community to go buy some more things and then bring it here. They would park then at the parking deck that's a and great then, question. So yeah. you only kind of get one entry into the parking lot because we are accommodating a max number of students um, as we go through in order to get everybody in for move-in. So if you are running to Walmart, Target, other locations to pick up items and bring them back, um, you can use the parking garages and then kind of jump on the, the shuttle again to come back to your room or use the park transit and parking buses um, that are available. So. Lots of great options, but uh, just kind of don't prepare to be able to come back in the lot because we are really using that next round of students for move in. Uh, one thing I thought I'd mention just kind of hit me as I was thinking about this. We get a lot of questions for students to say, well, I have a resident reserve parking list or I have resident reserve parking permit. When can I park back into my lot? 
uh, Monday after we finish the move-in process in the early afternoon, mid to late afternoon at some point. Um, we will make sure everybody's in, that everybody's checked in for the day, and then we will open those parking lots back up uh, mid to late Monday afternoon for students with resident reserve parking. So if you have resident reserve parking on Monday afternoon, you'll be able to actually go into your lot. And do we happen to know when they can get their first meal? Great question. We get that a lot. When can students start using their meal plan card? Um, Saturday morning, students will be able to start using a meal plan for the first time. Your swipes in the dining hall will work. Um, if you are part of sorority recruitment and moving in on Thursday or Friday, um, there is a process through sorority recruitment where you will have the ability to eat in the dining halls. You can go directly to the Greek Life site or the Greek Life office and they'll tell you the process uh, for that. But for that group, you can do that. And then Saturday, when most of our students are here, um, and, and Monday, for those of you who show up on Monday, you will be able to go right to the dining hall and begin to eat with your swipes. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I had one more question come in about actually special requests. Uh, if we don't hear back about special requests, move in, what should we do? Just feel free to email us. We'll be glad to follow up with you and just say, can you tell me the status of my special request? Um, I do ask you to be patient with those. We have a lot of those that we're trying to process right now. Um, and our staff is working as fast as they can and also prepare for move in um, to, to get those out. So again, if it's all possible for you to sign up for an available move in time, we'd encourage you to select your arrival time online because you can do that now. Great. Well, any parting thoughts from our uh, students or our dad or uh, Billy? If there's any more questions, feel free to jump in and shoot us in. Yeah. Um, or if you see this and maybe it's after um, the time you don't have a chance to submit a question live, you can either uh, submit a question to the Facebook thread and we'll try to check those and get back with you. Or you can just email us directly at housing at uark.edu and we'll respond as quickly as we can and get those back to you. Okay. A uh, question came in from Dana. How do you check out a dolly? So of the very few that we do have, uh, what's the process? The, um Volunteers uh, or um, lead hogs. Somebody associated with the university or the department will be using the dollies. There's no specific checkout. Um, if you want to um, have your own dolly, we basically ask you to bring it. So, right. Uh, some the, our dollies will be used by the university folks. So certainly don't bank on it. Um, and uh, then a comment about spots for Saturday being filled online. We'll have to kind of look at that after this uh, particular broadcast. I'm yeah, wondering. If you have a, that, that's a point. We do okay. at some points get uh, full. If you have a particular day that you're looking at that there's no uh, spot available left for a particular hall, shoot us an email. We'll check back to it. And if the lot is not ma maxed out, we'll go see if we can add some more time slots uh, to put those in. We're getting really close to maxing out our things, but we will do our best um, if you can come during that time to get you an arrival time that'll fit for you. Like registering for a class online and it's already full. You could send an email and you might, maybe, maybe yeah, you'll get we'll in. we'll do our best. If, yeah, uh, we'll if, try to accommodate. If we can get the, you in the lot and not overcrowd the lot, we will certainly work to make that happen. Excellent. Final thoughts? We're excited for you to definitely come here Woo! and hang out with us for the, for, for the first year of your college experience. So just come here, be safe, be smart, follow the rules. That's the most important <laughs> thing. Wear, clo wear closed-toed shoes and hydrate. Excellent. Okay. And uh, Nita, the general email is housing at uark.edu. Sarah asks, are the special arrival days unassisted move-in? Yes. All the special arrival days are unassisted move-in. The only assisted move-in day is on Monday. Um, if you sign up for a spot on Monday, it's assisted. The other days are the unassisted work. Just as our example, you pull into the parking space um, to begin to unload your things at that point. Fabian asks, can a can I volunteer to help new students move in? I would say yes. Absolutely. We would love that. If you are a part of the UR community, um, you can go to the Give Pulse site through the Volunteer Action Center and sign up for um, ability. We have uh, some things that are in the parking lot physically helping in and some non-physical activities, so don't let that limit you. Um, we're, happy to, we're happy to have as much help as we can and welcome these new Razorbacks. And you can find the link to where you would sign up on the home page of movein.uart.edu, there's a little section that says, hey, we'd love to have you as a volunteer. So go there, click on that, and it'll take you to the Give Pulse uh, sign-up place. Thanks for um, asking, Fabian. Great yeah, question. great question. And last thing, you know, as you're going through, please refer back to that movein.uart.edu uh, site. You can sit, find your arrival time there. You can find a campus map there. You can find out the what to bring, what not to bring list. 
Um, so lots of great information there. We encourage you to go check that out, particularly early next week, and get those maps, and we'll get you around construction and make your move in the easy. And those will be available Monday morning. Uh, and if you if you see something that you think should be on the move-in site that isn't, you know, email uh, housing.uart.edu and let us know. Because we want to be sure that site gives you the information you need. You want to uh, wave us out? All right. We'll see you next week, guys.